Silk is a luxurious woven fabric made from natural fibers that can come in different weights and types. This video will cover some tips to make sewing with silk easier. Just a note, some fabric stores will have a fabric called Silky. Look at the fabric content on the label. These are usually 100% polyester. While some of these tips can apply, I'll be focusing on fabric that's 100% silk. Silk fabric can come in delicate lightweight such as chiffon or organza and slippery shiny drapey fabric such as charmeuse or can come in more stable fabric like a shantung. You'll want to choose a pattern or design that best suits the fabric type. If it's more stable, you can sew something with more details and structure. If it's more delicate and silky, then you'll want a style that's more drapey. Pay attention to the care tag. Some silk fabrics will be dry clean only. Some may be washable. If it's washable, you'll want to pre-treat the fabric by hand washing with gentle soap and line drying. This will prevent accidental water stains later. If the fabric is slippery or shifty, cut it out using fabric weights and a rotary cutter. If you want to use straight pins, make sure to pin in the seam allowance area only and use extra fine or silk pins to prevent damage or snags to the fabric. When it comes to marking your fabric, test different markers or chalks on scraps of the fabric to see not only if it's visible, but also if it'll come out. If this doesn't work, you can also use Taylor's tacks to mark. There's a link in the description. When pinning pieces together, use silk pins. Again, staying in the seam allowance area only or clips. If the fabric is being really slippery, hand sew a basting stitch to hold the pieces together instead. For a machine needle, I recommend a Sharp or Microtex needle size 68 or 7010, depending on the weight. For a presser foot, if the fabric isn't moving under the foot smoothly, try using a Teflon foot. For thread, use 100% cotton thread as it'll be gentler on the silk fibers, but if you don't have that, you can also use all purpose. For sheer delicate fabric, use a smaller stitch length like a 1.5 or a 2. If the fabric is more stable, you can use a stitch length of 2.5. One tricky thing about silk fabric is that it tends to fray a lot. If you can, you should finish or serge around the edges of your pieces. If the fabric is way too delicate for this, you can also take silk weight fusible interfacing, cut it into really thin strips and fuse it to the edges. It's also because of this fraying problem that the preferred type of seam to do is the French or faux French seam. If you want to see a tutorial on how to do both of these, see the description for a link. If the fabric is difficult to sew and needs stabilization, put tissue paper between the fabric and the feed dogs. This should make it easier and when you finish, you can tear it off. When it comes to pressing with an iron, you'll want to be careful as silk can be easily damaged. You'll want to use a low heat setting and a press cloth. Press on the wrong side of the fabric and don't slide the iron. Instead, set the iron down for a few seconds and lift up to move to a new section. When it comes to interfacing, use a silk weight fusible that doesn't need a high heat to apply or use sew in interfacing. The type of silk will determine the best type of hem. If you're using a lightweight drapey type of silk, consider using a rolled or baby hem. If you have a more stable silk, you can do a folded hem or bound hem. Hand sewing it in place will look nicer. Some silks are trickier to sew than others, so it's best not to jump in until you're ready for it and to practice on scraps to get comfortable. But once you get it down, you can create beautiful garments. Our book, Professor Pincushion's Beginner Guide to Sewing, Garment Making for Nervous Newbies, is now available to order. Go to professorpincushion.com forward slash books or click on the link in the description to see a list of vendors where you can purchase it.